Alright, you guys saw the title. In today's video, we're going to be unboxing cheap versus expensive sniper rifles. Without further ado, let's jump straight in. For the beginning, we're going to start out with basically a L96 style. This guy comes in at about $20. Next up, we have a little mini intervention that also comes in at about $25. And then making a bigger jump, we're going to an M40 style sniper rifle. This one comes in at about $90. And then again, another kind of L96 style. This one is $150. And then going over to the $200 price bracket, this guy comes in at $220, the T11. With these next two, these guys are both $300 sniper rifles, but the difference is this guy is a bull action sniper rifle the vsr1 and then this guy is the svd russian classic sniper rifle and this guy is a gas blowback sniper rifle i'm super excited to shoot that guy and then last but certainly not least we have the 500 barrette 50 cal obviously kind of funny enough in the most boring box out of the bunch and that guy actually is electric powered so i'm really curious to see how that guy shoots let's unbox these guys and have some fun all right first up let's go with the uk arms p2703b <laughs> at this price range it kind of is like makeup like literally like random letters and uh numbers so yeah that's why it's a crazy name uh, but this kind of mimics the L96. Do not shoot at any human or animal. All right, well, noted. All right, let's unbox this guy. Obviously, it's covered in all this plastic, so let's actually get that off and see what we got inside. Starting out with something like a $20 sniper rifle like this, and then working our way up throughout the video to, you know, $100, $200, $200, all the way up to a $500 sniper rifle. It's always fun to see the difference between the cheap and more expensive ones. So, this is what we got. Kind of a cool little packaging with this guy. Got lots of cool little accessories as well. It actually does come with a sniper scope. Okay, let's see what this guy looks like. Um, okay, really not a sniper scope. It literally just has like a uh, plastic um, you know mimic of one it's not the actual glass in there oh it's got an on and off switch that's interesting pull that and see what that does on um usually when you pull the thing it works and i think i do see a battery in there so maybe it just doesn't work maybe it's for this laser at the front but the laser is just not working oh wait it's the opposite. So when I turned it off, it actually went on. So you guys can see a laser on right there. It's pretty funny. This is literally the dimmest laser I've ever seen. Obviously, you can't even look at it point blank, you know, on my glove. Next up, we have a little bipod in this guy. Pretty cool. Nothing crazy. And then you have a little uh, silencer suppressor, wherever you will. And uh, yeah, this guy just looks hollow. It's pretty funny. Obviously, doesn't do anything in this price bracket. But I guess it adds a cool little look to the end. And then obviously, we have the magazine. At this price point, very, very light. You know, it feels like pretty solid it might even be like a huge piece of plastic there doesn't look like there's a whole lot of parts here it looks like it's kind of just like two huge pieces that are like glued together or something actually it's pretty solid for this price bracket to be honest with you and instead of the actual l96 where you have the bolt back here and you cock it back like so this guy you actually just cock it back right there so it's kind of funny there you go and obviously you put the magazine up there pretty cool without further ado let's actually go ahead and uh, put these cool attachments on and see how this guy shoots and how it chronographs hey guys real quick i wanted to give a quick shout out to today's sponsor war thunder war thunder is the most comprehensive vehicle versus vehicle combat game where you can play as 2,000 different tanks fighter jets battleships pvp style every vehicle is modeled down to their individual components offering a super detailed combat experience it's also available on the pc playstation and xbox the game offers an in-depth customization system for vehicles allowing you to use hundreds of camouflages and decorations and War Thunder has one of the most dynamic and detailed vehicle damage models in gaming. There's no vehicle hit points, vehicles suffer actual damage to the components and crew instead. A damage x-ray shows you what type of damage you're taking on your vehicle and your enemies. My favorite part about War Thunder is its diversity of vehicles because it's like three games in one. There's also so much diversity of vehicles to choose from from all ages. For example, if you like being in the air, you can be a pilot in old school planes, modern fighter jets, and even attack helicopters. Play War Thunder on PC, PlayStation, or Xbox using my link in the description. Not only is it a free to play game, but if you register now, there is a huge free bonus pack containing multiple premium vehicles, premium account, boosters, and much more. Thank you so much, War Thunder, for sponsoring the video. All right, we have the Chrono Stand all set up. I'm going to just be giving a blank slate and using 0.20 gram BBs for all the Chrono tests to measure the joules and FPS. But obviously, when we test the accuracy, precision, and range, we'll be using heavier weight BBs for that. 178.9 with 0.3 joules. 179.9, pretty consistent actually. And the last one is 179.3, so actually pretty consistent. Wow, not too bad for this guy. All right, this mag is definitely a little finicky, so we'll try our best here, but it should be working. A little down. Let's try a bipod actually. Way down. Gotta at least hit the tree once, let's go. Ooh, almost hit the target. Hey, let's go. 
thing's pretty sick. You know, for 20 bucks, actually not too bad. Obviously, you're not gonna be like, you know, hitting the target very consistently, but you know, for this range, probably like, I don't know, 70 to 90 feet, it's not too bad. It's kinda weird how you load this guy, like so. Then you kinda gotta load this all the way in the gun or else the spring is not really strong enough to work with this guy. So that's kinda how you gotta do that. You know, just $20 toy gun things. So this guy, obviously, you know, 20 bucks, not too bad for a little backyard toy. All right, and I'm really excited for this guy. This is basically mimicking a intervention. If you guys played the old Modern Warfare 2, this guy was definitely my favorite sniper in that game. This is the smallest box for today. So I imagine it's pretty similarly sized to the actual picture on the box, but you never know. So I also see right here, it says one-to-one -one real scale completed grade type airsoft gun. That is very not true. All right, uh, oh, well, that's uh, interesting. <laughs> That's very interesting to say the least. This guy looks um, definitely not put together, but I guess we have a little instruction manual with some parts. Comes with a little bag of BBs. And it uh, looks like we have the rest of the stuff kind of all, uh, you know, mashed together in this box. Right. Got all the zip ties off. This is actually what we're working with. Can the magazine come out? Oh, it can, okay. So uh, basically the same, actually this is actually way heavier than the first magazine. I don't know why it's so heavy. Maybe there's some metal components in here, but outside is obviously plastic. Same kind of concept as the first one I went over. That guy just goes up right here as well. Well, this guy obviously comes in at $25. So obviously not working our way up too much, but I wanted to kind of showcase some of the cheaper ones because they're kind of funny. Boy. Looks like it has a collapsible stock that you doesn't have like a button or anything you just literally do it by four so it's kind of funny but you can adjust that all the way out like so it's got a uh safe and fire select i love how it's like inverted that's the funniest thing i've ever seen oh my gosh again like the previous one the bolt is supposed to go back here but with this guy it actually is in the middle but you can actually flip this guy to the side i guess and then pull the bolt back like that Looks like it has a huge extended barrel you can put on there too, like so. Uh, I guess that's how that works. So here's the little uh, bipod it comes with. I guess they flip down kind of like invertedly too, so that's how it's supposed to work, like that. And they just kind of slide up. And they don't really lock or anything, they just kind of go up and stay there. But that's how that works. And I guess you just slide this over the barrel or something? I actually have no idea. Um, something Bruh. like that. I really don't know. It's not really fitting in, uh, you know, this tube like I thought it would. So maybe you have to loosen it and then put it back on. I'm not really sure how this works. It has this little scope as well. Well, this guy again is just kind of like a hollow guy with a little uh, plastic circle and uh, you know crosshair, kind of a fake crosshair in there. Let's see if it has a little laser compartment. I guess it does come with some batteries in there, so it's good. Remove the little plastic piece, put that back on there, and then I guess there's this little button to actually put it on. Let's see if it works. Oh my gosh! This laser you can actually see, which is cool. It's actually kind of bright. But the funny thing about this laser is it's so off on how it's like you know aimed in. You don't even see it through the sight picture at all through the scope. It's like literally up to the right. You guys can probably get an idea right there. It's so far up to the right. No matter how you put this little scope thing, you can't even see it through there. So that's pretty funny. Without further ado, let's go ahead and put all this stuff on there and see how it shoots and chronographs. Next up, we have the little intervention. Whoop. Oh, it big broke. Oh, 13.2. There we go. <laughs> Nah, that's all we're gonna get from her, I guess. Yep, it is big broke. And this is why you don't buy cheap guns. Although it looks kind of cool, a little mini intervention, but uh, yeah, it just doesn't work. So this is why you probably should skip the uh, cheap guns, but wait, it's got a laser, so it's all worth it. It's a little off as you can see, but you know, it tried his best. All right, up next, this is where we start to get a little more serious, where you can actually be able to field the airsoft guns and actually, you know, be able to hit someone with them basically on the field. So this guy comes in at about 90 bucks, depending on where you get it. And this guy is made by Double Eagle and Matrix. And this is the Sportline M40A3. And I've actually done a little video about this guy in the past. I think it was one of my uh, favorite starter airsoft guns you can get. So if you are into sniping and you want to start airsoft and don't want to spend a crazy amount, but still want to get people out on the field, this is something I would recommend starting at. So as you guys see, there's a lot of different things going on here. You get basically a couple magazines. So here's one, and then there's the extra one down there. You actually get a speeder as well to load those guys up. This guy obviously comes with some tools to put the upper and lower together. It's obviously very simple. I'm not gonna show it on camera to bore you guys, but you basically put the upper on the lower and you tighten some screws. For the most part, this guy is full plastic. So for this price point though, I wouldn't expect much more. It obviously is pretty sturdy. It's not, you know, anything crazy, but for the price point, I would believe this guy would hold up pretty decently. And then we also have this upper right here so the lower obviously is all plastic minus a tiny bit of metal i think maybe the rail system and stuff like that but the upper seems to be a little bit more metal i think there is a quite a bit more of metal construction on the upper at least that's what it feels like all right i'm gonna go ahead and set this guy up and we'll go ahead and shoot it chronograph it and see how accurate this guy is all right the m40 see what this guy does 
All right, 470.8 with 2.06 joules. 460 with 1.97 joules. And last but not least, 453.1 with 1.91 joules. I'm actually curious if it'll go down a PS one more time. Nope, well, 458.6 with 1.95 joules. Ooh, yeah, that's a lot more FPS. Whew, almost hit it. I almost have to turn the hop a little bit down actually on this guy. This is using a uh, 3.2 grams now with the uh, nicer snipe rifles. With 0.32 grams, even with the hop all the way down, it's still kind of over hopping them a little bit. Nice. Nice. Obviously I'm, oh nice. <laughs> Obviously I'm doing no scopes with these guys. I'm just kind of using them all with iron sights because they'll make it a little bit more fair. Nice. Hit one more. Nice. Pretty good actually for 90 bucks. Obviously a tremendous upgrade from the last one. This guy, you could probably start actually fielding them at this price. All right, next up we have another L96 style sniper rifle. This guy comes in at about 150 bucks and this is known as the CM703. And this guy is made by SEMA. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump in and see how this guy looks. Ooh, I like the dark kind of earth, uh, you know, style on that lower. That's kind of nice. It's got a kind of nice little texture. I wasn't expecting that. It does come with a little speed loader as well and comes with some BBs and I guess a little magazine as well. Oh wow, this actually has some metal to it. Obviously I can tell a lot of it's plastic as well, but wow, it has some decent weight to it. I think the outside shell is actually metal. All right, let's pick this guy up and see what we're working with here. Wow, this guy is super heavy compared to the last one. I would say this is like two to three times heavier than actually that previous sniper rifle. So this guy's definitely got some weight to it. Obviously stepping up the price almost double. This guy is definitely having some nicer features such as the weight, just kind of the feel. Obviously this texture feels really good. And this guy steps up with obviously the look category. Um, It just looks a lot nicer, um, more professional if you will. It just kind of looks like a proper sniper rifle. Looks like you have a little a bipod connection as well right on the front right there. So that's kind of nice. And you have a couple different like sling mount positions as well. And obviously a full metal rail on top. Let's see you have this magazine fits in here it's kind of nice it doesn't really have a nice like click sound when it's going in but it definitely feels like it's snug in there i've actually never seen something like this it kind of has like a bolt lock if that makes sense so basically if this guy is backwards you can't make the bolt go up and you can't press the trigger but if this guy is uh you know forwards it's kind of like a mimicking like a safety system you can actually put the bolt up and cock this guy back and shoot it The bolt feel actually surprised me. At this price point, I thought it would be a little bit harder to pull back. Usually they have kind of like a, uh, maybe like a cheaper spring system, if you will. But this guy actually feels pretty nice. The trigger feel too is pretty sensitive, as you guys can see. So pretty much a kind of like a balanced, you know, beginner sniper. It looks really nice. It feels very nice. It feels good weight. It has some nice like metal parts. And the bolt and trigger are obviously very easy to pull back. So that's kind of user friendly. So that's kind of nice. 409.3 is the FPS with 1.56 joules. Pretty consistent actually, 409.7, 413. All right, 150 bucks, let's give this guy a test. Oh, I gotta turn the hop up on this guy a little bit. I don't even know where you turn it up at. Oh wow, so the hop up actually to adjust it's on this little wheel down here, it's kind of interesting. Actually a lot better system than all the other sniper rifles, it's definitely the easiest to use. Here we go. There's a good one. Nice. This guy definitely feels a lot more quality than the previous sniper rifle. With this guy, you're getting a huge improvement on the exterior quality. The bolt and trigger feel nicer too. The actual, you know, maybe performance this guy is, you know, probably a little bit similar than the last one, but obviously the upgrade is the uh, externals of this guy. All right, next up is the Action Army T11 sniper. This guy comes in at $220. And this is obviously the first slide off box. So that's kind of nice. Slide this guy right off. Comes with a uh, very big and uh, obviously nice instruction manual compared to the other one. So that's cool. Let's flip this guy around and see what we're working with here. Obviously, I kind of want to get this guy because it looked really cool. The barrel is on the smaller side, so it's kind of like a little compact, you know, snipe rifle, if you will. This guy comes with the, 
little magazine here. It's actually a really funny looking magazine. Wow, how do you put the BBs in? Interesting, what? So it must be like a mimic one. So this is what the actual magazine looks like. Uh, you obviously load the BBs and you can actually see them right here. It's actually kind of nice because you'll see how much is left in there. And this guy also looks like it comes with some kind of like thumb stop or like, you know, hand rest or whatever you want to call it for the, uh, you know, front of the gun. So that's gonna be nice. Obviously a big part of the construction is plastic with this guy, as you can see on the lower. But a lot of the nicer kind of more important parts like the last sniper are actually metal. The weight is kind of mitigated by the plastic body. It's not like overwhelming by any means, which obviously you don't want with something like this. Cause I would imagine the point with this guy is to be, you know, lightweight and uh, compact, but still have that sniper performance. Again, it has a little safety right there. So there is safe mode and there is fire mode. So the weird part is usually when I cock back a sniper, I leave the stock on my shoulder and then I take the same hand that I would pull the trigger with and actually be able to cock this guy back. With this guy, you probably just have to hold it in the middle like so and cock it back like that. Ooh. So obviously <laughs> that was kind of what I was worried about. It's definitely a uh, stronger sniper. With that comes the uh, harder trigger to pull back as well. So some people like that, some people don't. But this guy does take quite a bit more pressure to pull back than the previous one. So you kind of almost like want to put it on like your hip or your stomach or something like that to cock it back. You obviously could like pull with your left hand up and then your right hand back like this. So you can do it like that, but I imagine it would get a little annoying. And then this is actually how the magazine system works. So there's the magazine. It plugs in right there. It's kind of like hidden. And then this one is kind of just like a mimic one, you know, kind of look cool on the field. So there you go. This is the little hop up system right here. So obviously you can move this tab up and back. All right, let's see what this little guy can do. 347.2 with 1.12 joules. 326.9. And I don't know why they keep falling out of the barrel. It's not a good sign. Bro, why they keep falling out of the barrel? That's not good. $220 gun, definitely shouldn't be doing that. Bro. And 70.6. Uh oh, something's not going right with this guy. 320.9, all right, that seems a little bit normal. And it fell out again. Not too sure what's wrong with this guy, the BBs keep falling out. Ooh! <laughs> I come having to uh, lob these guys, unfortunately. Ooh, that one barely even made it anywhere. There we go. It's like barely even hitting, not even hitting the tree. Ooh, I think I hit one on that. So you guys get the idea. Obviously there's something kind of wrong with this guy. So unfortunately I'm not able to showcase the proper level of a $200 sniper rifle versus the $100 section, but without further ado, let's go on to the $300 one. All right, moving on to some And it even comes with a cute little bow. Check that out. Whoop, whoop. Very nice. All right, well, without further ado, let's go ahead and see what this guy looks like. Whoa, damn. Presentation on this guy is very nice. Obviously, it has this like really nice like sheet or blanket type of material behind it. It's obviously like very not, you know, soft or anything like that, but it looks very nice. And obviously, presented very well. This thing looks super sick. This is probably my favorite so far. It just looks super unique and obviously nothing I have ever seen before. Without further ado, let's go ahead and see what we get down here. Looks like we have a whole bunch of like key mod segments you could put, you know, throughout the uh, rail, I'm sure on either side or maybe even the bottom as well. Let's check a look. Yep, you could put one on the uh, bottom right there. Go ahead and see what this is. Looks like it has a little, you know, box covering up BBs, like a little uh, end cap and uh, some Allen wrenches. So pretty cool. And these BBs are kind of interesting. They look like more brownish than they are white. So that's kind of interesting. All right, let's take this guy out and see how it feels. But yeah, this guy looks absolutely insane. It feels very, very sturdy and compact. It's made up of metal and plastic. Obviously the important stuff like the other ones are metal, but this this body, it seems to be plastic as well as a grip and stuff like that. This guy feels super solid. And obviously for the size of this thing, the weight is actually pretty much perfect. It's not like too heavy or too light. It's just pretty much in the middle. This guy has a whole bunch of really cool features. Obviously has a top rail like the other couple ones, has a adjustable hop up down here, which is pretty cool. Oh, and you actually could hear the clicking, which is kind of satisfying. Very nice. The magazine is actually in the front right here. Nothing crazy, just like a plastic one. You obviously can't see the BBs inside. It is not clear like the last one. So you'll have to remember how many shots you've done. This is actually how you put it in, pretty simple. 
has a very, very nice satisfying click when you put it in as well. So that's always a plus. But the annoying part of this magazine system is you kind of have to play gravity on your side and also have this, you know, kind of facing downward and have the spring work every time. Because if you don't press it right, the magazine can come out kind of weird. And then to actually like pinch it out is pretty much impossible. At least maybe my fingers are just too big, but I can imagine not a lot of people will be able to do that unless you have really long nails. So with this guy, you actually do have to have it facing downward and actually have to press the uh, button in pretty hard to actually have it click out and uh, spring out like that. There's a very nice little uh, safety and fire select right there. It's a very nice satisfying sound and is a little bit harder to use than the other ones kind of makes it feel a little bit more quality and with this guy really cool you have a collapsible stock which is very very rare on snipers I don't think I've ever really seen this but I can imagine using this feature in like a milsim game could be very very handy like clearing a building with a submachine gun or an m4 or something like that and then when you get into a building and you need to engage it a little bit farther away you can have this guy stored in a backpack or something like that take it out with ease and be able to engage enemies at a little bit farther distance so I think this guy has a lot of usability pretty cool last but not least let's fill this bolt and see how it actually feels Wow, okay, that's nice. That's my favorite bolt of today. There's a huge knob actually on the bolt, so it's very easy to like find it and pull it up and cock it back, so it's very nice. And the weight is kind of the same throughout the whole thing. Like the previous one, it was like, when you got to the very back, it got like 10 times harder to pull back the very little bit of it. But this guy is kind of the same, you know, feeling the whole time. It's very, very nice. And obviously sounds very, very satisfying as well. And obviously the trigger pull actually matches that. It's not overly sensitive, but it's not hard to pull back by any means. There is the trigger pull. 270.8 was 0 0.68 joules. 269.2. 268.8. Obviously this guy is super consistent with the uh, FPS. You can notice that the FPS is a little bit lower than the other ones. Although this guy is shooting the mid 200s, it can probably still maybe outrange some of the cheaper snipers just because of how like consistent and uh, well, you know, constructed this guy is. So we'll actually have to see that in the range test and the accuracy test. This is where we start stepping up a quite a bit of a notch on the quality side as far as the feel and the actual performance of the airsoft gun. Sheesh. This is the first one that has kind of like actual iron sights through the little engraving on the, uh, you know, rail right there, which is kind of nice. In my opinion, the externals obviously feel a lot more quality than the previous ones as well. It just feels a lot nicer to use. And the actual precision and accuracy of this thing is definitely bumped up a huge notch. But that is obviously kind of what you're going to be paying for for this price bump. This is actually the first one in the video that I actually be comfortable with using in a game. Obviously, you could use a lower end one as well. But if I pair this up with a super nice scope, I feel like this guy could actually do some decent damage in a game. And crazy enough, this guy actually has the lowest FPS of any sniper in the video. So maybe with a little spring upgrade, this thing would actually do some damage. That is it. Pretty sick. Definitely my favorite airsoft sniper of the video so far. All right, going to the second $300 sniper rifle. Obviously, I know it's the same price as the last one, but I had to throw this in there. This guy is absolutely insane. This is the Russian classic sniper rifle, Aim Top International SVD gas blowback sniper rifle. Without further ado, let's go ahead and see what this guy looks like. My man looks sick as hell. It comes with one of these uh, weird like uh, loady boys. So there you go. All right, looks like this guy is all wrapped up and not fully together. So let's actually go ahead and take this guy out and see what it looks like. Whoop. All right, get this plastic. Oh, oopsie. Get this plastic right off. Don't need that. Well, this guy looks super sick. Feels pretty cool actually. So this is the magazine, uh, has a really cool like texturing. Obviously it feels very, very heavy. The heaviest by far, probably like 10 times heavier than any of the magazines. Obviously it's a gas blowback gun. You put the gas at the bottom like so, and you load them up with that weird speed loader. I'll show you guys kind of what I was talking about. You have to load the BBs up in this little tube and you kind of like place it on top like so. And you have to like force it in with this other little part right there. And then you kind of just whoop, put the BBs in the magazine. Cause normally speed loaders aren't really like tough enough to actually load it up with these weird quirky magazines. So that is the kind of like upper, you know, assembly if you will, looks really Really, really cool that's a very smooth texture i got the like desert tan type of deal for the uh, hangar looks really cool i'm super excited to shoot this like out of any gun that today this is probably going to be my favorite to shoot and i'm guessing the lower system obviously to put on the back right there is actually in this little box so let's actually see how this guy looks this is everything that came in that little brown box this is kind of like you know the rest of the uh, gun itself with the grip and the stock obviously assembly right there so that's kind of what it'll look like when it's put all together it's kind of like a little uh, cheek pad right there it looks really really cool as well i don't think it's like you know real leather i would guess probably not it's definitely super super stiff Obviously, you can hear right there. 
It's probably just like a plastic piece covered in kind of some fake leather. Obviously this guy isn't light by any means, but it does feel a lot lighter than I thought it would. I thought it was gonna be some crazy like heavy gun because of the length, pretty much, you know, full metal, all the important stuff. And obviously the plastic is the, uh, you know, grip and stuff like that, but everything seems to be full metal with this guy. You have the safety latch right there. So obviously that is off safe and that is safe. So pretty cool. And obviously these guys have a similar system like AKs do. So basically you put the magazine in like so first and you click it in the back and you pull this little latch towards the magazine and pour it out like this. Pretty cool. I've been waiting to actually, you know, pull this back and see how it feels. So that is definitely super satisfying. Every single time this thing shoots, it will do this with the bolt. So it's super sick. And obviously, Dan, that thing sounds super cool. Really fun to rack back. So obviously the SVD style sniper rifles don't come with any rails on the you know upper or the grip or anything like that or on the top anywhere. It's basically just naked with these iron sights, but it looks pretty cool. You can actually buy some kind of weird scope system with this guy to actually use a scope with it. Put a picture right there, but I decided not to use that because I actually really want to test the iron sights because that's super like unique with a sniper. So without further ado, um, I cannot wait to shoot this guy. Let's put it together and actually test out the iron sights and see how this guy kicks. Haha, <laughs> boy. All right, time to shoot this guy. I'm really excited to shoot this guy. I've never actually shot one of these. <laughs> that's sick. 428.8 with 1.71 joules. 409. 405.7. All right, let's go ahead and test this guy out the SVD. Let's see what this guy's got. Woo hoo hoo. This guy's having some problems with the uh, actual bolt going back and forth. Nice. Put a little more gas in this guy. Let's see if that'll help it out a little bit. Damn, the gas is just not learning to uh, work right with this guy. There's one. Bruh. Man, these sniper rifles in this video do not want to work. All right, I guess that was a little BB jam. Let's go ahead and see if we could fire the rest of the magazine. Load it up with some more BBs and some more gas. Woo. Woo. Yeah, then it does that little weird thing where like the trigger kind of double clicks and then it just doesn't cock back the next uh, BB in there. Kind of weird. Pretty cool, actually. Let's try uh, one more magazine and see what this guy's all about. Because obviously this thing isn't shooting, uh, you know, fieldable performance at this point. This thing just looks sick as f <laughs> All right. Yep, there it goes again. Come on, man. Come on, man. No. Ah, oh, come on. This thing's so fun to shoot. When it does shoot. Ah, <laughs> oh, it has so much potential. I see it. I see it. No! <laughs> Gas blowback side of things, this thing is actually pretty consistent, at least when it does work, so pretty cool. Obviously in this state, I wouldn't field this thing. It's very, you know, unreliable at this point, but if you were to get this thing more dialed in and figure out the issues with it, I think this thing would be actually one of the most fun guns actually to use in an airsoft game. Huh, boy. All right, last but certainly not least, we have the Barrett 50 Cal M82A1 from 6mm Pro Shop. This guy comes in at $500. Without further ado, let's jump straight in. All right, let's see. This guy's a lot of dust. Maybe it's been sitting in the warehouse for quite some time, but not wait to see what this guy looks like. Let's see. Sheesh. All right. Oh, it's got a really cool little card here. Let's check this guy out. Barrett Firearms Manufacturing Certification of Authenticity. Pretty cool. We got lots of stuff going on here. Looks like it has a little sling. Probably wouldn't trust this guy to get a nicer sling for this guy. What else we got in here? Looks like it comes with a, uh, oh, a huge bipod. So let's actually see what these guys look like. Okay, so I was right. These guys are part of the bipod system. This is kind of what it'll look like or line up like on the actual sniper rifle itself. So pretty sick. They look really, really cool and very uh, hefty uh, metal ones. So pretty sick. They also have that uh, top, you know, uh, Brett 50 cal kind of signature handle on the top. So that's pretty sick. There's what it looks like right there. Looks like we also have some BBs and it says snow up on there. So pretty sick. Going over to this side, it looks like we have the magazine over here. So geez, this guy is huge. Look at this. <laughs> Absolutely insane magazine. I mean, this is my hand for reference. I mean, that thing is absolutely insane. We actually be able to put BBs in this top portion. So you actually wind them up and they actually feed up into the system right there. The outside has like a metal little shell. So pretty cool. All right, without further ado, let's go ahead and get this guy out of here and see what it really looks like. It's got a huge orange uh, tip on the front right there. All right, so this is what it looks like, the whole thing. This thing is absolutely insane. And funny enough, I actually went for the uh, smaller version. So there is a version with a huge barrel, which I think is maybe even like close to double this size. But obviously I thought for like video and photo purposes, it'd actually be too long to capture. So I actually got the shorter one, but this thing is still absolutely insanely big. The uh, actual way to load the magazine, it's such a huge little like compartment, super cool. The bipod systems will sit right here. It looks super sick as well. So this thing isn't extremely 
extremely heavy by any means, but it's definitely not super light. This thing can actually get pretty annoying holding it for long periods of time. So I'd imagine people using this would probably be using the bipods most of the time. All right, looking at this side, it's pretty sick. You actually can cock this back. There is a little hop up system so you can turn that wheel for more hop or less hop. This is a fully electric one too, so even core, but obviously you're not gonna need to, you know, cock this back, but it definitely is satisfying. This is actually what it looks like putting the magazine in there. Absolutely insane. This magazine is probably the biggest airsoft magazine I've ever seen. It's almost like a little mini drum mag. It's insane. This thing is metal too, so it does kind of have some crazy clanking noises, which is pretty cool. It's got a little sling mount on front. Obviously this huge top rail, so you could put literally whatever scope you want. You could probably put like two or three full different sniper scopes on the top of this bad boy. I mean, that is so much free real estate up there. <laughs> I did notice with this guy, it does have quite a bit of different sling mount positions. So up here is one right there, another one right here, and then two more in the back right there, another one on the top there. And then if you want to chain this guy around, you have another one right here at the top as well. And obviously most sling mounts don't come with this kind of ring style, but it looks pretty cool. But yeah, you definitely have a lot of room to put a sling with this guy. Um, I would recommend putting a sling on this guy because if you want to sling this thing on your back or something like that um yeah your back is going to snap you basically can put this on safe like it is now or you can put it on semi-automatic which is pretty sick so i could talk about this guy all day this thing is super sweet but i really want to actually see how this thing shoots so without further ado let's go ahead and put a battery in this guy and see how it does all right people it's time for the monster let's see what this guy's shooting at This thing looks absolutely insane. <laughs> this guy is fully electric, like I mentioned. It is plugged up to a 9.6 volt battery right now. 375.6 with 1.31 joules, 382.5, and 382.6. 379, 380, pretty consistent actually. All right, it's 50 cal time, baby, let's go. Finally get to use a nice bipod. I did actually notice when firing this guy, I did actually do a couple of test shots with all the snipers just to kind of set the uh, hop up and stuff like that. Just kind of make sure they're shooting. A lot of the snipers have taken a shit, so that kind of sucks, but this guy is electric, so obviously it'll be pretty consistent, which is nice. But I did notice one bad thing with this guy, and you guys will see that in a second. So obviously it's hitting the target, which is nice, but you know, hop up itself is, uh, you know, not really working. I noticed when I actually opened the gun that the uh, screw in the hop up was actually already fiddled with. So somebody actually tried to fix it or maybe mess it up. I'm not really sure why that's already kind of broken, but I tried to turn the hop up obviously in the middle, all the way down and all the way up. And it's kind of the same. And obviously tried a lower gram BB as well. I tried 0.20s, which is kind of the lowest you want to use without ruining the gun. And I noticed that was basically the same as well. So basically the hop up just came broken with this guy. And that's very unfortunate for a $500 airsoft gun, but at least at this range, can actually hit some targets. Very nice. Don't forget to try out War Thunder using my link in the description below to take advantage of that sweet welcome bonus pack. It's kind of unfortunate though, because I did want to see the actual full potential of this guy, because you know, most people don't use electric sniper rifles, but it does have some, you know, play in the game, because obviously with the gas ones, as you just saw, they have problems as well, but they are kind of cooler to shoot. I have to give it that, but this guy is way more consistent, obviously. But I do have to say, this guy kind of shoots more like an AG than it does a sniper rifle, so that's kind of the only con. It kind of just reminds me of a AG in a sniper rifle body, which is fine if you like that. It's kind of more of a collector's gun anyway, I would assume, but for the actual performance of the thing, you're probably not going to want to use this over some kind of really nice souped up bolt action side rifle on the field. This is kind of just more a meme, if anything, with the electric gearbox in there. Well, at least you could shoot faster than any other sniper, right? <laughs>